What up, man? My dude, what's good with it? Yo, what up? This is episode 86 of Carrying the Culture Show. Body Bag Ben, one of the illest cats that I've heard in the past couple of years, and I'm trying to figure out where the fuck he came from. We're going to sort through all that. Fucking one of the illest show. I haven't heard no whack shit from you on the fucking mic, fucking producing. You've been killing shit, so I'm, I'm really glad to have you on, man. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate you, bro. Man, that's that's love right there, man. Appreciate the platform, dude. Nah, nah. So it's, this is going to be a fun one for me because um, I don't really know a lot about you. And so um, before we get into it, though, if you guys got questions for Body Bag Ben, please use the questions feature below. I can pull it up. And you can see them. I'm um, also just like on the page. If you get on any fuck shit in here, I will send you as home. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, gonna get it rolling. I got a question before we get started, though. Are you a Red Sox fan? You motherfucking goddamn right. <laughs> Yo, we might have to end this shit. <laughs> There's some static going on. <laughs> shit. Yo, yeah. fuck off. Yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump all over the place. How the fuck did that happen, yo? You know what, man? I um. I, I, I used to play Little League and shit as a kid. You know what I mean? I was a pitcher back in the day. And uh, I'm an older dude. You know what I mean? So the younger guys, they might not they might not even know who this is, but Roger Clemens. Roger Clemens was my, my favorite. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The motherfucking Rocket. That dude was my favorite player and shit. So it just, it made sense, dude. You know what I mean? It made sense and it just stuck with me. And I get shit for it all the fucking time. Because, you know, I'm out here in the West Coast. It's Dodgers, 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 Dodgers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um. That's all good. Look, check it out. I even got that shit tattooed on my fucking. Oh my god! <laughs> Fuck out of here, son. No. <laughs> yes. I'm a fucking. Ugh. Yeah, I, th I, I thought I escaped y'all like leaving New England when I left New England. <laughs> shit. But, uh, ugh. It could right, be worse. We'll we'll it could be continue. worse. I could be a huh? fucking Yankee. I could be a Yankees fan. No, you should be a Yankees fan, son. That's. You could, you would improve your life. Nah. <laughs> we'll continue. Fuck it. We'll, we'll keep going. Um, but yo, on some real shit, I, I love these types of discussions because I don't really know a lot about you. And for me, it was like, yo, I'll, I'll play the first joint I heard because it got me the first joint that I heard that you produced. This was in 2020. And this was my introduction to you right here. And uh, big up everybody joining into the show. Got body back bed. <laughs> So I heard that Lord Body with MOP, big up to good brother Billy Dance, been on the show a few times, big up fame. I'm like, yo, who produced this? Who, who the fuck is this? Yo, like, and then I started hearing all this shit, yo, like, from all these heavy hitters that I fuck with, Milano, Chino, all this, you know, the MOP shit, you know, doing the cannabis, Jay Cyanide. So please explain, yo, like, just, I know you didn't just appear out of fucking thin air, but it feels like that to me. So, like, what's, <clears throat> bring us up to speed a little bit. Yeah, man. So, um, that joint right there is actually funny. I see the homie jumped on here. Boo Boo, what's up, my G? Big up, Boo Boo the Prince. Yeah. Young, young shooter right there from San Diego. Okay. I made that beat. I made that beat. And uh, we were going to do a song, right? And I tossed it to him. I put it in a pack. I threw it over there to him. And, uh, you know, one thing or another didn't get used, right? The thing just kind of got left behind. So uh, the MOP thing came up. I was like, fuck it. I like that beat. It's rowdy. You know what I mean? It's rowdy as fuck. And I was like, yo, I could hear MOP on this shit all day. So I sent it over. And Fame went crazy. Fame loved it. Fame went, you know, he, he was like, yo, that's the one. I was like, oh, shit. All right. I, was, I wasn't really expecting him to fuck with that one because I made some shit that was, like, tailored. Like, if I played you the MOP joints that I had, like, ready for them dudes, you'd be like, yeah, those are classic blueprint fucking that's MOP shit. So this one was a little bit kind of like I was, I was happy they picked it. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, it, 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 it's rowdy. But I, I've never really heard him rock on nothing like that before. You know what I mean? And I, and I was I was hyped. I was hyped that they picked that one. No, it was it was fire. So like, I mean, bring us up to like, I mean, I, again, I don't think you just started doing this shit in 2020. So like, I mean, what's you know from 
my man, Big Up C's, he said 805 Oxnard, right? That's 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 right down the road, you know, kind of from, from L.A., you know, so West Coast. So, I mean, just take yeah, his history as far as, like, yeah. so, how long you so, been doing this? And, and, well, first of all, like, what generation, I guess, would you say you identify with the most? Because that helped, that'll help you put it in perspective. Yeah. I mean, I'm almost 40, you know what I mean? So, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm getting up there, and, you know, I first started listening to hip-hop back in, like, you know, fuck. 90, 1990, 91, you know what I mean? First record I ever had was a Run DMC record, you know what I mean? My my old man took me to the fucking thrift store and got me some cheap-ass turntables, and I was spinning records. You know, I was listening to LL Cool J, Run DMC, Eric B, Rakim, you know, shit like that. I used As a to youngin. Yeah, from a young kid, dude, young cat. I was probably like, I don't know, maybe seven, eight, when I started listening to it. And uh, those were the ones that resonated with me. Eric B and Rakim, that, that shit like changed changed my life you know what i mean like how i viewed music because back then it was like when you're when you're a kid you know there's not i mean you don't know what's up what's down what's left what's right you know you're just in the world and you're kind of absorbing shit and you know i'm, I'm very fortunate enough to kind of come from a family that has a very eclectic kind of musical uh background you know they, they'd listen to everything like my mom would listen to um zap and roger my fucking my my aunts would always listen to like Earth, Wind, and Fire and shit like that. So they always had music. There's always music in the house. You know what I'm saying? And you know, come from a Latino background and shit. So there's always you know Spanish music playing on Sundays and shit. Whenever you heard the Spanish music, you know it was time to get up and, and clean some shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> there's always music in the house, man. So you know, like, but the shit that really like permeated with me was fucking Eric B and Rakim, man. That shit, like, just... The beats were crazy. The rhyme... I, I don't know, man. I just remember being in awe. Like, yo. Like... I mean, that's a game-changing album, yo. I mean, and that's, you know, unofficially the start of the golden era. I mean, so that, that, that album, you... I mean, I was a little older than you when I heard it, but I'm saying, like, it, it had the same effect. It had the same effect on a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, that, that was... It was a monumental shift in hip-hop when that, when, that, when that shit dropped, yo. Like, Most so. definitely. And, and I was very grateful to, to um, you know, to, to have a dad who saw how much I really enjoyed listening to music. You know, I mean, he would take me to the record shops. I'd I'd go pick up albums and just listen to records, bro. Just just all day, all night, man. Just listen to music, listen to music. You know what I mean? And um, that shit just, I don't know, man. I knew one way or another I wanted to get up in it. You know, I started rhyming. I, I started beatboxing and shit at a young age, like 12. You know what I mean? Try to write some little bullshit raps and beatbox and try to, you know, have the little little ciphers with my homies and shit. We're spitting a bunch of nonsense. But that's how it starts. You know what I mean? That's how the seed gets planted. Of and a lot of them dudes now still, still to this day that I fuck with, even from, you know, 30 years ago. And all them dudes are still doing graffiti. They're still Whoa. beatboxing. One of the homies, uh, his name's Vibetron. You go on YouTube, you type in Vibetron beatbox. This dude got millions and millions and millions of views on YouTube. This dude's one of the best beatboxers in the fucking world, in my opinion. But he just don't get no credit like that because he never did anything with it. You know what I mean? He's just one of, local, one of them local dudes who's super dope that that just never never did anything with it. You know what I mean? And that's the story for a lot of people. Shit, that's the story with me for a long ass time until, until, until I fucking decided to stop being lazy and, and do something with this shit. You know what I mean? I was just some dude from the... From the around the way, <laughs> you know what I mean. Body bag, who? There was no such thing, you know. But um, so it started, you know, it started way back then. Just just having a love for it, having a passion for it, and, and I feel like having an ear for it. You know what I'm saying? Like I think a lot of people, you know, they they're not fans first. There's too many artists, too many people that want to be in it and don't don't they they don't love the shit. They don't they don't appreciate. It. They don't they don't know what it what it does. And what it Match. did for, for people like me and, and, and other cats who really like are students of that shit and and, and, and that shit's like life, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm saying music my life. You know what I mean? I wake up in the morning, I'm listening to music. Throughout the day, I'm listening to music. I'm writing music. I'm thinking about music. I'm trying to figure out how to, how to turn this shit into a real fucking occupation, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I think so far, you know, I'm just barely scratching the surface with it, but, you know, I got this shit up off the ground. It's moving. Um, you know, but I still got a lot, you know, a, a long way to go. And, you know, I've been enjoying the process. And, you know, to answer your question, man, it's, it, it does kind of feel like I came out of thin air, but 20 years in the making, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
one of those type things. But um, I think for, you know, the people who've been kind of following me and kind of been listening to my shit, um, I see the, the homie Jamil, honestly. What's up, Jamil? Peace, peace, peace. Yeah. Of course, that's family right there. He's, he's super dope. Um, of course. I say like 2016, 2017, like early, I, I put out this uh, compilation album called The Season. And it had uh, it had uh, like Daniel Sun and Rome Streets and Riggs and all them dudes on it. You know, all them dudes before they like blew up, blew up. You know what I'm saying? Like this was, they're on their way, but this was still, I got them, you know, three, four years before they they, they hit that, 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 that peak. Um, Ito, same thing with Ito. I put out an album with Ito called Integrity. Um, one of my personal favorites, man, because I, I, I think what we did on that one didn't really ever get a lot of, uh, didn't really get a lot of, you know, a lot of love, a lot of, a lot of credit, but people who really, who fucked with it and sat there and sat there and listened to it, like that shit's fire, man. Like that's probably one of my, my favorite ones because I, I literally crafted that shit every fucking nuance of every beat specifically for for ito and his voice just just complimented the complimented the album man like crazy so definitely definitely fucked with that one um and then you know what man i uh i just had this idea you know because i always I always rhymed i never i never considered myself an mc i never considered myself a, a rapper or nothing like that you know what i'm saying like i said i'm a fan first you know but i always knew i could do it I never, I never thought, you know, I, got, I don't got stars in my eyes, bro. You know, I'm not, I'm going to be the next fucking Jay-Z. No, <laughs> that ain't my shit. I'm, I don't get, I think that's kind of corny to me, but, you know, I, I, I just kind of got, I kind of got over the, over the fucking fact that some of these dudes, man, and, and I ain't going to say no names. I ain't going to put anybody on blast like that, but some of these dudes, man. I'll like, do it for you. Oh, I know. I know you will. <laughs> that's why I love you, man. Like, you. That's why I fuck with you, bro. You, 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 you keep that shit one hundred percent thorough. Like That's some of these dudes really think that they're the ones. Like they've done it already. They, they, they're at the top of the hip hop fucking mountain. It's like, yo, get fuck you. You a you ain't shit. B you gonna reach in your fucking pocket and all you're gonna feel is your fucking leg. You know what I'm saying? Like get your shit together. Get your real life together before you try to fucking fake like you're some fucking god-like mc on fucking on the internet you know what i mean and that's that that's the shit that really sparked me dude to be honest with you i was waiting and waiting and waiting this dude i sent this guy like eight hundred dollars for a feature he wasn't even worth eight dollars you know what i mean so I, I gave it to him anyway this motherfucker made me wait like six seven eight nine months fucked my whole album release up fucked it all fucked everything up and then when he sent the stems back the stems were fucking trash Sounded like he fucking recorded it in a fucking soup can. You know what I mean? I had to fucking, I had to pull some shit out of my out of my ass to make it even sound good. You know what I mean? And and I said, you know what? Fuck fuck this shit. Why the fuck am I paying these this, this dude eight hundred dollars for for some bullshit? I could rap better than this motherfucker. You know what I mean? And that's kind of how it started, man. I ain't gonna, I'm not even gonna front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's. that's I'm gonna dust my motherfucking rhyme book off, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I I'm gonna do this shit on my own. Fuck it. No, that that's hilarious. One thing that stuck out for me that was as you were talking was about the support that your father gave you because you know I mean not everybody had that as far as as far as like encouragement to to do something that they like. You know, as kids, a lot of times why you know why you here why are you doing that? That's not da 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 da. But like fucking you know that was, I think that's an important point that 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 um right there that you that you had that you know that guy that you know, that encouragement just to kind of do your thing yo my old man's still still a fan bro you know what i mean he's still a fan and um you know it, it's crazy to to you know he when i see him you know he's busy dude he's retired and shit he's i see him every now and again but he he, he basically is just like it's crazy to see how far you've you've taken it you know what i'm saying and i go man we we're just getting started you know what i mean and he goes man i know i remember you used to be in your fucking room on the weekends when everyone was outside playing and doing all that, you know, fuck around with their friends, you were inside writing, writing rhymes. I'm like, yeah, I remember that shit. Word. That's, that's dope. So, yo, what's, what's the, um, what's the scene like as far as, or what was it like when you grew up? Just like your, your hip hop experience. I mean, was it, 
Was it, um, I mean, I lived in LA for a little, for a little bit. I mean, was it, because I, I looked, I even looked up, because I, I know where, Ox, I've heard of Oxnard, but I, was, I didn't know how close it was, like 60 miles, it said. So was, yeah. were you in LA a lot? Was it, was it, or was it its own scene out where you were? How was that growing up? You know what's crazy, dude, is, is, so I'm born in, born in Oxnard, and, and we lived there until I was like, probably like 10. And my dad works construction. So, you know, you got to go where the work's at, you know, when you work, when you work in construction. So he ended up moving all of us to this little bullshit desert town uh, called Lancaster, Palmdale, Lancaster. I'm not sure if you ever heard of that place. It's a little, fun, that shit. little no. tweaker, little tweaker desert town in the middle of the desert and shit. But it's L.A. County. So it's still close enough to like L.A. where all the fucking ex-convicts and shit and all the fucking uh, all the fucking rats, all the all the informants could like get out of get out of L.A. and be far enough from these fools that are trying to like kill them and shit <laughs> and, and still be in like L.A. <laughs> it was weird, man. It's a weird area, bro. Like especially in the early 90s. Lancaster, this is a fact. You can look it up, too, if you want. And in, in, in the early 90s, like 93, 90, 94 type shit, Lancaster is violent crime rate like the murder rate was 44 percent higher than the fucking national average it's one of those towns I mean, that's one of those that's towns. how so that's how spots i mean i i and it's cool that you shared that because it's like i'm from connecticut and there's like spots like that there like new haven and shit people are like yo what it's like number 10 and yeah. fucking yeah, it's crime weird. like this so this spot so it's, it's one of those spots it's just out of the, out in the cut Yep. You know what I'm saying? Some places are fucked up because of like the economy was once there, yep. but now it's not there. Or some yep. shit. Yep. Everybody's stuck there. Like a lot so. of drugs, a lot of violence, a lot of gangs, um, a lot, a lot of runoff. You know what I mean? Like all the all the cats that were coming from like, um, you know, South Central and Compton and East LA, and then you had a lot of fucking uh, like Nazi lowrider like prison gangs and shit that were there, dog. So it was like this crazy mix of like just fucked up people dude and it was every other day gunshot motherfuckers getting stabbed motherfuckers getting beat up motherfuckers getting like we moved into this neighborhood fucking two weeks later some one of the dudes there was a like a skinhead guy that used to live next door to us and there and there was these younger black kids that lived across the street like two, two o'clock in the morning you hear sirens and people screaming and this and that Dude hit him in the head with a machete, like literally tried to cut his head off, and like big ass chunk of his of his skull was hanging like, hanging off the shit. And that was like the first two weeks living in the city. I'm like, whoa, this is a fucking culture shock, you know? What I mean? <laughs> Coming from Oxnard, you know, don't get me wrong, there's places in Oxnard that are pretty rough, but for the most part, it's it's a nice it's a nice place to live, dude. It's on the beach. You know what I mean? It, it's nice. You know what I mean? And then we go there and motherfuckers are getting getting chopped up with fucking machetes. <laughs> fucking weird. Pulling up machetes and shit two weeks. Yo. You ain't even packed. You ain't even unpacked yet, son. Like still have the boxes in yeah, still have the boxes in the living room, man. It was crazy. So but to to go back to your question, um Milano, what up my boy? Up. That's my fucking brother right there. Big up Milano. Yo, so to 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 go back to what I was saying is you know, it was really easy to to, uh, to to be involved in really fucked up shit. You know, gangs, drugs, this and that and the other thing. Music, man, hip hop, that shit, that shit is what kept me alive, man. It kept me out of trouble, it kept me going, you know what I mean? And the, the core friends that I had, dude, these guys were all just about it, man. They loved it because all their cousins were gang bangers. All their homies were doing this and that, you know what I mean? So they're, they're, they were like kind of doing the same thing I was just trying to stay out of the, stay out of that shit. And, and, and music and hip hop per se, just that whole lifestyle, that whole culture is what kept us all, kept us all on the straight and narrow, man. And we weren't no, you know, we weren't no fucking pushovers. We like, we, we still fought, we still got down, we still did our shit, you know what I mean? But we, we weren't doing drive-bys. We weren't fucking cutting people up with machetes, you know what I mean? Nothing like that. You know, There's levels to everything. Yeah, man, yeah. So, you know, we got into it at a young age. Like I said, you know, 11, 12, we started beatboxing, DJing, breakdancing, doing graffiti. And then the homies started rhyming. I had one homie, um, Defy. This dude, this dude, him and Bobby, and my other homie, Bobby Rytel, they used to call him Mech 3. Um, these guys were like the local legends. You know what I mean? Like these guys were like, you. There'd be two hundred, three hundred people at a party, all standing in a circle just to hear these dudes freestyle because they were fucking. They were they were dope. You know what I mean? They were the ones. 
So I was always like, yo, I want to do that. I want, I could do that. Fuck that. You know, cause I've always been secretly rhyming, you know, writing rhymes, you know, at home and shit, getting ready for, for a moment like that. So that's kind of how it started, man. You know, I wasn't a very good break dancer and shit. <laughs> like I was all right. I couldn't really, I couldn't really uh, throw up no graffiti that well. I mean, I could do, you know, a little bit here and there. I could DJ. I knew that was the first thing I ever started doing. I could DJ scratch and beat juggle and all that shit. Um, but rhyming, that, that shit was always the thing that, like, really kind of resonated with me. You know what I mean? I always knew. I was like, man, I want to do that. Producing wasn't even on the, that wasn't even a thing in my mind. It wasn't, I didn't even think about that shit. Really? So, nah. so what do you, so what do you, I mean, it's like, at this moment in time, March 16th, I mean, it, like, so for it, so as a fan, and this is why, I, again, why I like these, these bills, because I'm just, my questions are just genuinely, like, as a fan, I'm, I just want to know more about you. And so, like, I know, like, again, my my introduction to you is Body Bag been the producer. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, and I've heard I heard like three or four joints, and then I'm like, oh shit, he rhymed too. What the fuck is this cat doing? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. you know what I'm saying? So, as a fan, I know you as the producer, but like, what do you like, if you had the gun in your head, like, give up one? Which one would you give up? Uh, probably rhyming. Um, I probably, I probably, I probably say, you know, I've had, I've had my fun with it. I, I've done, the, I've done things that I've wanted to do with it. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to cultivate it, but the thing that pushed me over the, the top was producing. That was the thing that got my, 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 my hand in the door. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was the thing that was able, I was able to plant my fucking flag and be like, all right, yeah, this is what I do this, but yo, I do this too. You know what I mean? So definitely producing, man. It, 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 for me, that that stimulates a whole different part of the brain. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, always knew I was probably gonna do it. You know what I mean? Because I've even back then, you know, 12, 13 years old, whatever it was, I had a homie. His uh, his dad was a musician, uh, jazz, uh, Dominican jazz player. He had a little studio in the house. So whenever his dad was gone. Or whatever, we'd sneak in there and fuck around with all the shit, and play, uh, play the drums, play guitar, and all that shit. So I started learning how to play drums way, way early, super mm. early. So that's why when you hear my drums now, it's like, you know, it sounds like I'm playing them because I know how to play drums. That's that was the very first instrument I ever learned how to play. And then of course, you know, I've, over over all the years, I've taught myself how to play guitar. I've taught myself how to play, uh, you know, piano and shit like that. I'm not, I'm no fucking. Um, no goddamn fucking uh, shit. I can't even think of anybody right now. Who, who's the motherfucking? Oh, can play a bunch of shit. Yeah, uh, I can't. I can't do that. You know what I mean? I can't. I'm no I mean, Prince, Prince Mozart, really, right? I, I mean, no Mozart. Prince was really could play like fucking anything. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know what, dude? Yeah, man, that 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 dude was an amazing musician. So I think I think um, you know, for what for what I do, um. The, the level of skill that I have works for what I do. You know what I mean? Just making that gutter shit. <laughs> yeah, yo. I mean, so let's talk about that because, you know, like, the, the L.A. is distinctly different from anywhere out east. If you, like, either way, if you've never been east, it, it's just so different. The vibe, yeah. that, that gang energy is deep out there. That shit is different. The yeah, gang graffiti is different. Like, the vibe, the beats, everything, the shit's it's just different, yo. So, I mean, how is it that, like, your sound, I guess your signature, signature sound came to be your sound? Like, what what was, and then I, I do have a list of um, some of your influences and stuff that you said, your heavy hitter producers, but how is it that it came to be that gun and shit? Because yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, Yo, you make me want to go like just run up on people at the ATM. I can't play this shit all the time, <laughs> bro, like, so I gotta like. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's definitely you know. I, I try to pull inspiration from all the things that 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 are not popular. I try to pull inspiration from the B side. You know what I mean? I like I like all the you know the. You know, don't get me wrong. I like uh, "Protect Your Neck," and you know, I like the, you know some of the more popular songs. But I've always liked the shit on the on the on the records that 
people never talked about. But like, oh, what about this one? Side B, side whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I like the, I like, I like the more grimier, dustier shit. You know what I mean? I've always been like that. And, um, you know, even like the, to go back to like the Eric B and Brock Hem shit. You know what I mean? Like, listening to, um, you know, follow the leader. You know what I mean? Like, that was one of my favorite ones. You know, you listen to that bass line on there, dude. That's that whole that whole record's crazy. Sounds like oh, someone's dropping across the floor. Yeah. Hell yeah. So that's that that's kind of like when when I go when I set the plate. You know, when I set the table to 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 start making something new. I try to like. I I, I don't I don't want to say I always start with with the drums. It all it's that's pretty much the nucleus. You know, I mean I always I always try to get the drums like established, at least in my head. And then um I don't know. Any anyone that that's listening to this, you know, I've I've seen a couple producers jump on here and I saw J.R. Swift jump on here and a couple other guys that are really dope. Um, you know, there's no there's more than one way to skin a cat, you know what I'm saying? And and it really it really just how how you get there doesn't really matter. It's just are you satisfied with the end product? And, right. you know, I feel like if the shit passes my fucking, my, my, my quality control uh, inspection, then I think most people are probably going to agree that, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. Um, and that's just from years and years of listening to, to the B side shit. You know what I mean? The listening to the, the throwaways, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's the shit that, that, that gets me. No, that, that that's dope. Y'all. And, and listen, like when I was, for the short time that I was making beats, the, the, the OGs that taught me how to do that shit, like, we always started with the drums. I mean, that's just what we started with. Like, that was, that for us, that was the foundation. That was the heartbeat, you know what I mean, of the whole shit. I mean, so. Yeah, the rhythm. Like, Action. That's, that, that was it. And then layer after layer after layer on, on top of that. I mean, that was kind of our, our, our mode. And whether it was a sample or not, or, or, or an original instrument, or live instrument, it didn't matter. But, you know, we started out. Well, that's how we started out. So I mean, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, there's different ways to to, to do it. But but um, yo. So you said I, one of the few interviews that I did see that you that you did, um, or that I read about anyway was you mentioned your influences as far as style wise pr producing your heavy hitters, you, Primo, RZA, Alchemist, Dre, and Pete Rock. So I need you to rank those guys. I like probably like RZA. I don't know, man. I mean, like, I'll be honest with you. You know, like I said with with the Wu Tang stuff, um, you know, you like you got the popular joints. You, know, you got you protect your neck. You got you know, ice cream. You got you know, a lot of them joints that everyone knows. I like the shit on the albums, man. I like I like some of the shit that he did with like, just throwaways. You know, what I mean, those, those are the ones that always used to get me, man. But um, well, with Primo, I, that that shit. His stuff, man, back in the early '90s, bro, was just like insane. You know what I mean? To, to hear what he could do with ten seconds on a on a fucking on a SP 1200. You know what I mean? What, how much shit he could cram into ten fucking seconds and make that shit sound crazy. Um, so I don't know, man. It's definitely a toss up between the two. But I probably got to lean. I probably got to lean with my man Primo just because he fucks with me, man, and he's always showing love, always plays my shit. So definitely, definitely premiere on the top of that list number one and then just i'm talking like a fucking skosh under him rizza you know what i mean his drums are just d disgusting got that analog sound that 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 i like and, and the bass lines and the nasty samples you know he'll he'll take he'll chop something up that's like a two second loop and and make a whole fucking song out of it you know what i mean it, mm. ignorant as fuck but i love it i love that shit and um but for some reason, it just gets you. You know, he's, they're able to make it work. So, um, you know, of course, Alchemist. You know, Alchemist kind of came along a little bit later. Um, you know, Pete. Pete's a, Pete's a legend. You know, I love all, I love the fact that he runs on his own shit too. So, you know, you got you got to give the man credit for for uh, you know wearing wearing multiple hats in those regards. Any DJs, you know, what I'm saying, so any DJs too. You know what I mean? So that's that's another thing um, that that I really. Don't I won't say that I'm a DJ DJ per se, but I mean every every record you ever heard of mine that has cuts on it, I did it. You know what I mean? Oh, well, I, you're, you're a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did it. I never hired I never hired anybody else to do it. It's always been me. Um, but I don't know, man. You know, I feel like 
I feel like even beyond hip hop, you know what I mean? Just, just music producers in general, man, just like people who just write really good shit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like to, I don't like to, like you said, Prince, like Prince, that's one of, that's, that motherfucker is a genius. The dude's a fucking brilliant motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, rest in peace. And, 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 you know, you can't, you can't sit here and say that that guy didn't have influence on all three of those or four of those other people that I just mentioned. You know no, what I mean? of course. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's just, it goes beyond hip hop for me sometimes, man. And just listening to someone who, like me and my brother, we got really fucking high the other day. And we're, we're listening to a, a old Nirvana, um, like 1080p. Someone got this shit and remastered it. It was like a concert they played in up in Seattle. And just listening to that shit, I was like, fuck, these, this motherfucker was a genius too, Kurt Cobain, even though he was, you know, he was fucking a tormented soul and everything. But it, it's just, having an appreciation for the artistry, you know what I mean? And not just, not just putting myself in, Oh, I'm only strictly hip hop. I'm only, no, fuck that. That's just, that's just whack. You know, it's trash B, right? That's just fucking trash. <laughs> you know, people ask me sometimes who I listen to. They're like, I don't listen to anybody new. I don't really even listen to a lot of old school hip hop as much as I used to anymore. Dude, I'm, mm. riding, I'm riding around listening to like, Fucking, <laughs> this shit's gonna sound funny, dude, but it's true. I, there's this, a radio station out here in LA called K Earth 101, and they play nothing but like old oldies and shit, like old Elton John music and old fucking Gap Band and, and fucking old, just old, old good shit, like classic dope shit. And um, I kind of feel like that's like the white noise that I need in the background to, uh, to just kind of let my mind roam a little bit you know what i mean i feel like sometimes if i'm listening to people or if i'm if i'm listening to too much uh, of the of the same shit it, it's hard to it's hard to get re-inspired it's it's hard to um to to make something new you know what i mean if you if you listen to you know i, ha I have one of the homies he's he's a uh and it's kind of funny that this motherfucker said it because he goes all all the all the hip-hop beats everything sounds the same to me mm. I go, how do you figure that? He goes, well, it's all like, doo, doo, ah, doo, doo, doo. I was like, yeah, true, right? That's the, that's the, you know, there's an the essence there, there's a the backbone there. I go, but, but if you, if you like look through it and, and listen through it, the content's different, the baseline's different, the, the drums might have a change, the, uh, you right. know, there might be a sample in there that, 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 that kind of hits a couple different registers. And I'm like, you know what? Hold on, strike that statement. This is the same motherfucker that he plays, uh, he DJs dance music. I go, motherfucker, dance music? You're talking about how hip-hop's repetitive. Dance music. Bro, I've been to one of those bullshit little festivals. I sound like the motherfucker was playing the same record for 10 hours straight. I didn't know when it changed, when it stopped, if there was a new song. <laughs> you know, but I don't know, man. I just, I don't like to, um, you know, I'm just giving you the real answer. You know, I could have gave you some fucking cookie cutter answer well, of course that's what i want i would hope you would give me the really yeah I'm, I'm giving you how i feel how i think um i just think there's there's too much uh too many really talented people out there to, to just be like okay these are my top five these are my top yeah. four man i got like hundreds of thousands thousands of people that that inspire me to 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 try to write new shit and try to do new shit and um you know, even the way I produce now, you know what I mean? Like, if you go back and you listen to, like, say, the first thing I put out, the season, you listen to those beats, and you and you kind of just kind of progressively listen through the five-year, six-year uh, timeline, you could you could see the change. You could hear the change. And not only did it get better, like, quality-wise, because I just got better shit now, <laughs> but I just started paying attention more. Like, you know, I, I want the shit to sound like a like a production. I don't want it to just sound like a beat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Of course. There's a difference. Definitely. Definitely. Yo, did you tell me, I don't know if I dreamed this shit or something, or we had a conversation. This was like, it was like in passing, like where you said it like on this, that you're like a cattle rancher or a horse rancher. <laughs> or you have a ranch or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Me and my girlfriend. Uh, well, actually, my, my soon-to-be wife, I'm going to, I'm a proposer here uh, this year, and we're gonna get married. Um, nice. We, her, thank you. Yeah, she's she's beautiful, man. She's she saved me, man. She she's definitely the one that uh, 
that brought me back to all this. I was dead, man. I wasn't doing music. This shit, I gave up. I said, I didn't care. I didn't give a fuck about it no more. You know what I mean? This was not, it was nothing to me anymore because I tried so hard, or at least I thought I did, and it never went anywhere. I was like, I'm not going to waste my time, my money, my energy. My uh, I'm done with this shit. So when I met her, she she just asked me. She goes, hey, what do you into? And I was just like, oh, I used to make music. I used to do this. She goes, why don't you do it anymore? And I was just like, you know what? You're right, man. Why don't I do it anymore? I went to Guitar Center that day and bought like five thousand dollars worth of shit <laughs> and just got back in it. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even kidding you, dude. I, I sold all my old gear. I got rid of everything. I didn't have shit. Nothing. When I met her, I had a mattress on the ground. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and uh, so she's she's definitely she definitely gave me a lot of a lot of strength, and I, I I thank her for that every day, man. So she. Uh, yeah, if it wasn't for her, there'd be nobody back then. Straight up like that. <laughs> no, I feel you. Yeah, I understand. What that is. Yeah, when you got an adult lady next to you that supports your shit, it's, it's shit is fire. <laughs> and she, and she loves it. And like, I'll, I'll have her listen to shit. Like, I'll be sitting there making beats. I'll say, hey, come check this out real quick. She'll be like, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. And she has a really dope ear for music, too, man. She listens a lot of, like, you know, Buddy Guy and Muddy Waters. And she listens to a lot of jazz, dude. She's a really smart person, dude graduated from berkeley and shit like that you know what i mean so she's she she knows and she's not a yes man which is the dopest part about it you know what i mean like she won't just be like yeah that's it she'll be like nah, nah, nah i don't know i'm not feeling that one <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. so but um shit i kind of got a little off, the off ranch the you got ranch. A ranch she got the ranch and i'm lucky enough to live there with her so yeah yeah and i'm no fucking i'm no uh we don't have no cows or no no shit like that uh. They just got a bunch of oranges and like avocados and all kinds of fruits and vegetables and shit up there. It's really dope. It's a really, oh, okay. it's really I mean, beautiful. It was just quick. I was like, yo, this cat out like with a sheepdog and shit. I, mean, I, <laughs> I wish. I'm be honest with you, man. That, that I mean, I see the way her dad moves, and this guy's like the just the happiest guy in the world, man. He's like 63. He's retired. She, the dude just smokes like a bunch of weed, and he he jumps on his tractor in the morning, just takes off for the day, comes back for like dinner and shit like that, and dude, it just, dude's just happy, man, just happy that he has that that place to go to and 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 call home. And his whole family's been in that area for like eighty two years. You know, they got a couple hundred acres, so it's dope, man. And they all live right there. You know, on 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 the one side of the mountain, there's a. Uh, the uncle, there's cousins. I mean, they got a whole fucking generation of people that that born and raised up there, man. So oh dope. wow, that's dope. No, that's dope. Yeah, I, I wanted to clear that up. I, I, I had, <laughs> I, had a, I had on my outline like, okay, cattle ranch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I fuck it. Let's take, let's roll with it, man. Put that in there. Yeah, body bag band is cattle cattle rancher slash. <laughs> Yo, I, I can see. <laughs> I like, I, you know, I mean, people people have different. I mean. Listen, we all have different sides, and I, and I think it's important that you even spoke on, like, yeah, it's not just about hip-hop. I mean, dope shit is dope shit. I mean, people be like, yo, why are you posting house or techno or, or, this, or this old 80s pop shit? I'm like, yo, motherfucker, the police is fire. I don't give a fuck what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, shut the fuck up. You know it's what probably I mean? for so, some little twat that thinks fucking J. Cole's the best rapper in the world, you know what I mean, or alive. Or, or, or someone that just... That's so stuck on like the nineties in hip hop is like, yo, nineties yeah. hip hop only or death. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, fuck yeah. you too, because you suck just as much as everybody else. You know what I mean? Exactly. Word. No, I feel it, dude. I feel it, man. I, I, there's there's some people that hit me up on you know, DMs, and I'm sure you get a lot of weirdos in your fucking inbox too. It's weird oh, motherfucker talking about, oh, why would you have a guy on there singing or why are you working with uh, 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 Snoop Dogg? Or why are you working with him? Why are you doing that? And I'm like, hey, because I want to, motherfucker. I can do whatever the fuck I want. You know what I mean? It doesn't always got to be uh, the same old, same old, man. Like, it's 2022, for fuck's sake. It's, it's time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listen to some new shit or fuck off. Or fuck off my day. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, this this you know, social media shit is, you know, creating bugged, generational weirdos. It's bugged out, dude. It it's so bugged out, man. It's, it's people move in a weird way because they can hide, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. I, nobody would say half the shit they say to you or me or whatever, 
weirdo oh. shit in person, right? Like, no, fuck no, hell no. Especially if people really knew how I was. You know what I mean? You can't really see what I look like, but I'm going to tell you something, dude. You're going to take about two, three motherfuckers to knock me over, man. <laughs> All right, but I'm not that no more. I'm, I'm just a, cat, a humble cattle rancher now, you know what I mean? I just... Yeah, you yeah, you out on the range with the fucking straw in your mouth and shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I see my man NUT I see my man NUT jumped on. That's my boy sure. right there. Um, that's that's family right there. Big up DJ yeah, NUT. He, he's the one he's the one that set up uh he's the one that helped set the table for the MOP joint. Oh word? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's good that's good people's right there. So yeah. big up uh -huh. to him. Pen penitentiary mail show. You know what I'm saying? Salute. Going, going strong for years. Oh, holding yeah. it down. Good dude, and just besides, and just besides that, he's just a really fucking good guy. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. hard, he's solid. It's hard yeah. to just, it's hard to find just genuinely nice people in this bullshit. There's too many fake motherfuckers, man. Like, you know, just to go back to what we we're talking about, man. It, the internet is like the best slash worst thing that was ever invented. Yep. You know. Yep. Sure, we use it, it all the time. Yeah, we use it for businesses, and we, you know, we're able to do this. This is this is fucking cool. But just man, just like people's souls and people's like perception on on reality and and their logical like the the logic the logical train of thought and just like putting things together. That shit's like getting so fucking scary and so weird now. It's like people think they could just say anything they want to say now, and 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 there's no you know recourse for it. And, um, you know, it never used to be like that. Like you said, man, you pull up on someone in person and you start talking wild. Man, I've seen people get fucking, dude, <laughs> I was at this party one time and this guy, we're in the cypher, everyone's having a good time, boom, boom, boom. And this guy's all drunk and he's like critiquing everybody's shit. But he ain't saying nothing. He's just like, he ain't rapping, he ain't contributing to the session. He's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just like talking shit. And so... One of the homies and I and he used to he used to fuck it. He was a really dope MC, but he he was he banged too. Like this dude was uh some kind of crip or some shit. I can't remember what hood he was from, but his, this dude was a fucking thug. You know what I mean? Like he was he was cool, but he you know if he if he crossed that line, he was gonna do some fucking some shit. And so long story short, this guy is critiquing his shit. He just fucking knocked his ass out, dude. And this guy hit his head on the curb, and I don't know what ended up happening to him. He like started fucking seizuring and shit all crazy and. Everyone broke out. I never, we never did find out whatever ended up happening to do, but you know, that same kind of person exists every day online. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know, and you could, and you know for sure that that person has never been fucking punched in the fucking face or, or, or pressed or anything like that in real life. You know what I mean? Because they've all been able to do it from the security and the luxury of their fucking yep. keyboard, phone or whatever the fuck they're, you know, chiming in on. Popping off, yeah. It's it's a different, it's a different age. I mean, it, that's 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 the way people pop off now, man. And it's like, you have no idea, man. Like you, you wouldn't. It, it's crazy. That's why now I just, before I used to get like really worked up about now. I just laugh it off. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm man, the same, like, dude. I don't I don't give a fuck, bro. Like like I said, dude, I'm getting older. I got my life together, dude. I got a real fucking career. I make real money. I got kids. I got a fucking soon-to-be wife. I mean, I got real things in my life that I I care about. You know, I, and I mean this in the most humble, the most humblest way, because music is, is very important. To me. But music is the wackest shit I'm into. And I'll just say it like that. You know, people might not understand what that means, but music is the wackest shit I'm into. Yeah, I, 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 I totally get it, yo. I totally. I mean, get like it. I said, I hate to say it that way because I love this shit, and and you know, and I stand, <laughs> I, totally I stand by what I do, and 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 um, you know, I, I want people to 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 feel what I'm saying when 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 they listen to my shit. But if you listen to a body bag band record, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you know me. That doesn't mean that that paints the picture of who I am as a Church. person. Church. You know? You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I, a lot of people get get they they get caught up in that shit, and it's it goes beyond the music for me sometimes, bro. Because it's just like I try my hardest to 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 feed the streets, and I try my hardest to keep 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 you know 
fucking flooding the fucking saturating it with, with new shit, new shit. You know, I can't always be doing that. That shit takes time. You know, I got a real, like I said, I got a real life. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's just, I don't have enough hours in the day to be talking about hip hop or worrying about if your fucking CD got shipped out or this and that. I'm like, I don't know. Go fucking check the fucking tracking. Is it, is it the fuck does the tracking thing say? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, fuck. Fucking bug me. <laughs> yo, I fuck with you, son. That, that's just why, yo. Just, see, you, you, you speaking to my fucking ears. Look at the fucking internet. <laughs> yo, I'm looking at wifey right now. But she knows I, I fucks, I, I fucks with you. Thank you. Yes, yes. No, I, I get it, yo. It's, it's, there's more to you than this. This and people, people think. Because what, of what they see, that that's all there is. I'm yeah, like, I just yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, this is yeah. like ten percent of what I fucking have been into. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I have a hundred interests. I'm like, this yeah. shit is just this this shit is just this thing that's popping off right yeah. now, kind of. Just one. And I'm yeah. doing right now. I said yeah. I could do this, 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 and this. Like, yeah. been all kinds of plates. Yeah, no problem. I got you, and that's and so it's like, yo, there's you know, many faces, man. Like I. It's not, do not label, do not box me into some fucking, like, you know, like, the hip-hop guy or the, the rapper dude, you know, right? Like, because you're more than that. So that, I appreciate yeah, you sharing I'll, that. Be on, I'll be honest with you, though. I, I don't want to have a personal relationship with everybody, neither. I don't like a lot of these motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Like, keep they're me fucking open. assholes. Yeah, yeah. Well, these cats are fucking dicks. They, yeah, they fucking, yeah. yo, let's keep it 100, yo. They, they, you bumped into some, some cats. And you're like, damn, you're really a fucking dick, right? Probably like, damn. How yeah, pieces of shit. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Nah, it's crazy, though, because, it, I mean, like I said, man, I love this shit. I love it. I, I love it. But the ego that comes along with it and, like, this whole weird state of mind that comes along with it, it's, it's fucking bugged out. Like, these motherfuckers <laughs> really think they are who they proclaim themselves as, and they ain't. They're living at home with mom. They got two, three kids that they can't support because they'd rather fucking uh, do a music video or, or go buy some fucking shoes and take a picture and put it on Instagram. You know? <laughs> we'll get your kids some fucking diapers, man. <laughs> and take that baby, get them fucking dino nuggets out of the freezer and get that baby some real fucking food. <laughs> Yo, that is... Going to be the clip that we post. I just wrote it out. Go get your kids some fucking diapers. Fact. Yeah, get them fucking dino nuggets out of the freezer, man. <laughs> yo, yo, Fact, yo, yo, you guys don't know my man Zom, Zom from Ox. If you don't know about him, super dope MC, really good brother. Check his music out. Really dope. All right. Inzon, All right. Ox, you got he got the body bag co-sign. I'm about to, I just wrote it down. Yeah, no, he's fine. He's fine. All right. But, yo, so, yeah, I don't know where the fuck we were because you just told him to go get the kids. I know that kids. Yo, so hold the on. Bucket, you right give here. your kids just the said, Lunchables. Shit. Someone just said right here, what do, you, what do you call real? I mean, that's like a loaded question, man. I mean, what do you call real? I mean, define real. You know what I mean? I think if being yourself and, 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 and not having, you know, not catering to, to the conversation and saying all the politically correct shit that people want to hear, I don't know. Is that real? I don't know. I don't think that's real. I think that's just being your genuine, authentic self. And a lot of people don't do that shit, man. A lot of people are, are quick to, to put on that, put on that character, put on that mask, you know what I mean? And, 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 uh, and, on a, put on a fucking a false a bullshit. You know what I mean? It's bull, fucking bullshit. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how fucking more simple I could put it, man. It's, uh, this shit has really agitated I'm me. Still laughing at dino nuggets. I'm sorry. <laughs> fucking dino nuggets out of that freezer, man. <laughs> oh my god, are we make that's a t-shirt. Yo, fucking feed no, your I'm, family. It's just I don't know, bro. Like like I said, man. This these some of these dudes really. They just got me at. They just got me there. They just agitated me, man. Like to the point where I'm just like, I can't. Yo, if, 
Can't take it no more. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to have a fucking vent session one day. We burn, burn I'll come, whatever, either in person or Zoom, and vent, you know, because I, listen, they, some of these cats are asked, you know, the good ones are the good ones. Salute, we can rap guys. The good ones are the good ones, but the assholes are the, you know, this cats. Yeah. Well, I'm like, yo, you've been popping off a little bit on IG for about a year, my G. Don't get it twisted like you fucking yeah. rock him. You're not black thought now. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? Like, that type yeah, of shit. Yeah, there's a lot. There, I mean, don't get me wrong, man. There's a lot of really talented dudes out there, right? Females, uh, males, producers, MCs, whatever. That's great. That, that's fantastic. But it, it kind of takes me back to my uh, original comment. You know, there's not enough fans. Everyone wants to be an artist. Everyone wants to be the next. Everyone wants to be the man. You know what I mean? Everyone yeah. wants to be the fucking man. And that's that ain't it. They they ain't a plate. There's too many fucking, too many too many chiefs, bro. Not enough Indians in this motherfucker. That might that might not even be politically correct no more to say. You know what I mean? It's too many too many chefs. Too, too many fucking. Shit, <laughs> you can't say a goddamn thing now. Fuck it. Okay. This is your page. We say whatever the fuck we want to say. <laughs> I, I know. Word word now. Of course. Yo, speaking of being into different shit. I think I did read. I think I did read somewhere that you, oh, you were in a hardcore band at one point, right? Yeah, yeah, I was. Man, we're signed and everything, and we toured, toured all over the fucking place. And, Word. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's dope. Like, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know about that part. So I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'm familiar with the, what's the, what's the scene like out there? I mean, I'm familiar with the like the, the East Coast scene as far as like, um, kind of like the '90s cats, like Hate Breed, Josh the Fourteen, and shit. Oh, that's yeah. like. Yeah. So the band that I was in was very much, like, like Hate Breed. Heavy fucking, you know, like heavy brutal fucking vocals and shit. I was, I was the front guy. I was the fucking vocalist, and I used to fuck people up, dude. I used to like go in the crowd. Motherfuckers would be singing along, dude. I just, I would, I, I was at a show one time. I just, I'll just do, give you a quick example of how crazy I used to get. Oh, God. People are singing along. People are singing along. And in our city, in Oxnard. We were we were we were big, dude. I mean, we could play a show on a Tuesday randomly, and this was before fucking Facebook and uh, Twitter and Instagram and all that shit. All word of mouth. There, this was even before MySpace, and we would just play a show Tuesday. Five, six, seven hundred motherfuckers would be there, show up, and we would destroy the venue. Like literally, walls would be fucking crumbled, the ceiling would be torn down. I mean, we would fucking destroy the place, and the venue would still invite us back to come play because. <laughs> <laughs> Either they wanted they wanted people to come and, and spend the money. Um, but so, long story short, my little brother used to come to all my shows. Um, and and this fool, he was rowdy, dude. He was in the mosh pit and get you know going off, and some fools try to fucking like jump him, but he didn't. Them fools didn't realize that a his brother was the fucking singer of the band. B he knew probably eighty five percent of every motherfucker that was in there, and so the fight got like pressed up against the stage. And I remember I wrapped the mic cord around this dude's neck and I fucking went like that and I fucking was squeezing it so fucking hard I ripped the mic off the end of the fucking cord. I started beating this fool in the fucking head with it. <laughs> That's how crazy we used to get. <laughs> Is that where Body Bag came from? Shit. Damn, <laughs> Nah. I actually, you know what? That, that story is actually pretty weed, cool. Man. Nah, the the homie, the homie Mark Ford, he's the one that gave me that name. And uh, Mark Ford's from 805 too, man. And he, he, me, and, me and him wow. click up. I'm not sure if you ever heard of him too. Another dope, really talented, uh, really talented guy, friend of mine, uh, produce MC, does all the videos that you've seen of mine. He's 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 done them. Um, but now nah, he was at my he was at my spot, and I was just playing him beats, just playing him beats, playing him beats, playing him beats. And he was like, "What do you go by?" And I was like, "I don't know, Ben." He's like, no, nah. he's like, come on. He's like, no, nah, how, how about body bag then? He goes, everything you do is a body. It's a body bag. I'm like, all right, word. And I just rolled with it. And he, and he, oh, didn't, think that gonna, he didn't think that I was going to keep it. And he goes, bro, like a year later, you got an album out with Etho. Body bag then eat and Etho. Like, I, I told you, I was like, I don't, I don't get hung up on shit like that. And plus, you can't really give yourself a fucking nickname anyway. You know what I mean? So he said one thing. I said, fuck it. Let's roll with it. Let's run with it. I mean, it wasn't corny, so let's go. I mean, yeah. fuck it. Let's, exactly. let's go. So, yo, like, you did the, recently, I mean, the cannabis thing dropped. That shit was fire, by the way. Kaiju yeah. shit, right? Um, yep, yep. That, 
if you haven't checked out that project, uh, Cannabis Body Bag Ben, uh, Kaiju, that dropped, what was it? Was it, tw was it December, the beginning of Yeah, yeah December, December of last year. Yeah, yeah I mean, the days run by, but yeah, no, so. And every um, week, fucking 500 albums are coming out, you know what I mean? So it's hard oh, to keep yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Well, and then, and then you just dropped the fucking um, this shit, like, on the, the vulgar display on the, on yeah, the heels man. of that. So, um, I what, put that what, thing together in two weeks, by the way. What's that? That vulgar display. I put that together in two weeks. Damn. I made all the beats. I wrote all the rhymes. I recorded everything. I, I had the homie mix and master it. Got the art done. I got with the homies at Fat Beats. And that was that. And that was that. And that was that. I didn't, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. And, and it's funny. I was talking to Chino today about it because I got a crazy... Uh, I got a crazy DM from uh, Mixmaster Mike last night. So if you guys don't know who Mixmaster Mike is, this guy's a legend. This guy's a DJ for the Beastie Boys. Hit me up out of nowhere. So he followed me. So I noticed that and I was like, yo, peace, man. Thank you for following me. I'm, you know, I'm a fan. You're a legend. And he goes, nah, bro. He goes, I fuck with your shit heavy. He goes, that affiliated track on Vulgar Display is fucking stupid, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and I got with Chino. I was like, bro, check this shit out. And I was like, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Like, before I dropped this shit, I was talking to my lady. I was talking to a couple of my homies. I was like, I don't think people are really going to really respond to this. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, I'm just going to put it out there and, and, and just see what happens. You know what I mean? And uh, I was shocked. I'm going to be honest, man. I'm still kind of shocked. Uh, I mean, I knew, I knew from my point of view, it passed. It checked all the boxes for me that it needed to check. I liked all the beats. I liked the content of the rhymes. It sounded good. I felt like it had a, a, a good flow from top to bottom. Um, the art came back good. Um, so I felt good about everything. I just didn't think that people were really going to, like, fuck with it, fuck with it. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, this dude, this dude, you know what I mean? Who, what is he, a rapper? Is he a producer? What, what's, what's going on with this guy? Um, but it, it's, it, so far, it's been, it's been love, man. And, and it's gave me a lot of confidence to... Uh, to keep, you know, keep busting my pen, dude. And I already got part two done. Um, this one, I did 10 tracks. And um, and I went, I went even crazier, man. The beats are fucking crazier. The rhymes are crazier. Um, I think, I think you know, for, for the sake of it, I want to do, um, you know, I, the goal is to put out, like, five of those this year. Mm. Put, out, put out, like, five vulgar displays. Okay. I wanted to do something like every month, but I just, it's not, it's not, it's not, I don't have enough time to do that. You know what I mean? I, like I would like to do it, but you know, I want to make sure that the shit sounds dope. It, it's, it's, it's checking all the boxes. I don't want to just put shit out to put shit out to be like, Oh, I got something out every month. Fuck, who gives right. No, I mean, one every, two, I mean, listen, in 2022, that's one every two months is actually like nothing, but yeah. But like I mean, like going back to our era, I mean, Cassett put out an album that maybe once every couple of years. So like, yeah, exactly. That's exactly. basically if you're doing five joints, five six joints, that's one every couple of months. So I mean, yeah, that's that's and that's a lot, and that and, lot. that and that's just my shit. You know, I mean, that's just the shit that I'm doing, like the vulgar display stuff. I still got an album coming out with Planet Asia. I got a oh, project, yeah, I got a project coming out with Chino XL. I'm doing yeah. another. I'm doing another Kaiju. Um. There's a couple other little things that, that I'm working on, like in between those two. Uh, you ever heard of? Um, you ever heard of? Like everyone's heard of these guys. I mean, it's it's the gr the grind time, like the underground, the battle rap shit that you everyone's heard of. So the homie Lush, the one that that kind of helped grandfather that shit. Me and him are doing an album. So and and that's another good good friend of mine. And uh, you know he's he's kind of having a resurgence. Um, you know he's he's definitely. He's sober. <laughs> he's he's um he's in a good place in his life right now. So his music is 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 better now than it's ever been. You know what I mean? He's not oh. all fucked up and uh so that's 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 another lane that I'm that I'm gonna be kinda tapping into, you know what I mean? And um and then I'm doing like a R and B um kind of crossover type thing with the homie Kobe Honeycutt. And uh okay. I don't know if you, I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he's he's another guy that's uh you know, out here on the West Coast, Grammy Grammy nominated um, R and B singer. He's worked with everybody. Worked with Eminem, Fifty Cent, Dre. You know, this guy's worked with everybody, man. So we we we're putting some we're putting some shit together. Oh. Uh, 
And it's not whack, dude. It's not like no fucking. Uh, it's not no soft shit like this shit. Nah, this shit. yo, I, I can tell. I already wrote the name down, man. I mean, you, I'm, I'm like trying to get the spelling from you before, after we get off, but um, but yeah, I mean, I. I know what to expect, man. I expect quality from Body Bag Ben. That's what I expect. Yeah. So no, it's gonna I, be I dope. It's gonna it's dope. gonna hit all those things that you want. You know, what I mean, it's definitely the beats are still gonna be fire. Um, and he's dope, dude. He's, his his content is really good. He got a really good voice. So I'm I'm dope. really excited. Dope. You got a lot of dope shit in the workshop. Real quick before we get out of here, what um is your um is your hardcore shit online anywhere? Yeah, yeah. So you could go on there and just type in Contra, C O N. T R A Contra, and the name of the album and the name of the album was called "This Machine Kills." All right, word. I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat that shit because yeah, you can check that. Uh, I'm a old school Josta 14 hate breed head, so like, like, this, if you like hate breed, you'll you'll like this shit, man. I fucking that's that's C T R day. So yes, um, yo, we gotta get out of here. I got another show. I appreciate you. This was fun for me. I got to learn a lot. I'm fucking. I was excited about this, and just as a fan, you know, like as a fan, as a person wanting to get to know you better, I bucks with you. We, you know, we rocks with you. The whole squad rocks with you. Appreciate but, um, that. But I, you know, I'm saying it was good to like meet, link up, and stuff like that. And, and and like you shared some shit that really resonated with me. So I'd like to actually talk about some of that soon. Honestly, to be honest, for with sure. You. So hey, shoot but, me, um, a, shoot me your number in the message, jargon, and, I'll, and we'll we'll get that locked in. And you know, yeah, we'll, we'll get that set up. So. I will uh, get this up on the YouTube, tag you, share it, and everything, and all that. You know how we do. But um, Wait. thank you again. This was episode 86, Body Bag Ben. Fucking, yo, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you, my man. Have a good one. Thank you. You too, bro. Salute. Peace. Peace.